Oh boy, it's going to be one of the most best upgrades maybe for the retro shooter Pandora's box. This thing is absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, when it comes to these devices, we have a lot of complaints about the solenoids of the original retro shooter. But this is the solution and brings it to another level. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we're going to take a close look at the MX-20 form. This is the ultimate solution for elevating the retro gaming light gun experience. And the reason I'm saying it like this is simply because this thing comes with a 24 volt solenoid and nothing be compared with the original kit itself. But let's do a quick unboxing and I'll show you what are we getting in the inside, how we need to connect it and how does it actually work. It also comes with the lenses that you can put on here. Not going to be using this because it doesn't have any extra effect for me. It just works perfectly out of the box. So I bought myself the kit with a hub. But what you can also do is getting yourself a Retro Shooter Pandora's box combined with the Retro Shooter Pandora's box, the MX-24. There are different configurations, so let's do a chit chat about it because otherwise I think it's going to be quite confusing. The base kit will contain the Retro Shooter Pandora's box. We have the power supply that powers on 12 volt for the, let's say, system itself. Then we're having the four sensors and all the needed cabling. So this is the base, let's say, just the set with nothing included. So this is the light gun basic kit. Comes with all the necessary parts we just chit chatted about, but also comes included the light guns, the normal light guns. A lot of you maybe bought it, so you can just add the MX-24 guns to this kit itself. So for the people who don't know about this kit, what I love about it, it comes with USB connections and everything that you're going to be needing. So for the just normal kit, you can just go and be plugging this inside of this game box and you can just plug and play and it works quite well. But how about the kit itself? I think you can also buy the kit with a retro shooter. So you still have the same stuff, but there was one big difference that we're getting in hub. And the hub is something you're going to be needing. The hub is going to be especially for 12 and 24 volt. And this is the reason why you're going to be needing it. You can't plug in the 24 volt inside of this thing. You're going to be frying it. That's one thing to be sure. Nevertheless, you're going to be getting this. You're going to be plugging one or two MX-24s in here. And then everything has to be plugged in and this USB goes into the system. That's actually how it works out. But this kit is actually what you're getting. If you don't want to have the original light guns, but you can get yourself the Amex 24 and a complete kit. In my case, I just bought it like this, just a hub. I got myself the power supply and the light gun itself or the machine light gun Amex 24. And I'm going to be using this on my kit already having. But how does it actually work when it comes to the sensor? Some people were confused uh, with my previous video, so let's give you a quick overview. So the first cable is going to be in your, let's say, box itself. So this is a normal USB, and this is going to be connecting to both of the, let's say, top sensors. You can just also use it on the bottom one, depends how you want to do it. So all of them will point out the arrows to the screen itself. Going to be putting it on the corners. And you're going to be linking this one to that one with a USB-C and the same goes to the right one. That's actually how you're going to be connecting it. It's a lot of cable nightmare going on, but I think you can be managing. If you're going to be having permanent solution on your television, you can just do just be creative with the cables, but still a lot of cables. Cable nightmare. Yeah. The configuration of this MX light gun is going to be slightly different with connecting. You need to be very careful. If you're going to be connecting it differently, it's going to be highly possible. You're going to be frying your, let's say, main box. So what do I actually mean? So this is a 24 volt device and you're going to be needing the hub itself. So with the hub, we're going to be connecting the power supply. This is going to be the 24, 24 volt power supply that's going to be connected with the Firebase. This is the new Firebase, and I mean with the new Firebase, that this thing is 12 volt and 24 volt. So also don't use the older one. You get yourself one Firebase with your MX light guns. Nevertheless, so as you're going to be plugging this thing in, it's going to be giving the 24 volt that you're going to be needing. And then we're going to be connecting this with your device. In this case, the MX light gun machine thing. Overall, everything has been configured like it is from the machine gun to the power. And then we're going to having the USB connection. And that USB connection is going to be connecting to your, let's say, device when it comes to a PC, or in this case, the retro shooter machine itself. So this is the way how you need to connect it. Very important. If you're going to be plugging in 12 of the 24 volt, 
yep, you're going to be highly possibly going to be frying your full system. So be careful with this. With the retro shooter, we do have two options. So having the original retro shooter the device, and this is just great. It's a very nice, let's say, solution. It's a very small gun, and the feedback is quite nice. You cannot really disable it by saying pressing a certain button. What you only can do with it is holding it, putting it in rapid fire, and I can tell you it's absolutely great. I love it, and it's fun to play it with games like Terminator. And then, of course, we're having this gigantic machine gun. And this thing is just another thing. And this works with 24 volt solenoids. But what is also kind of cool is now having an extra feedback at the back over here. If you're going to be holding this against your body, you're going to be feeling it in the gun itself or the light gun itself and also at the back. When it comes to the rapid fire, we can shut it off by holding this lever over here. And it's the same configuration. So this is basically the differences between the both of the devices. And which one is the best for you? That is only the thing that you can decide. But let's do in chit chat regarding the MX light gun. What is it and how does it actually play? That we're going to be finding out today. So first of all, so when you're looking at the weight, this thing has a very nice weight to it, an absolutely quality feel. So we do have the trigger over here. And the feedback itself is absolutely amazing. So what is kind of cool, so have an extra button at the front, so when you're going to be holding it, it's super convenient. For example, if you're going to be playing Terminator, you can shoot the rocket, so you don't actually need a panel with this. And I'm guessing with Time Crisis, it has been configured to, let's say, going from ducking mode to standing mode. So at the side, we're finding this lever. The lever itself is on both sides, and if you're going to be holding this for a couple of seconds, you can switch between rapid fire and the normal fire. So over here we're finding the three buttons that have been configured for getting into the special menu for quick load, quick save and all the other features. What is kind of interesting and is quite difficult to showcase is at the front here we're finding the D-pad and with the D-pad we can navigate through the menu itself. And this is one of those special things they implemented and made this particularly, let's say, unique for the retro shooter overall software and the hub if you want to connect it with a PC. So at the front we're finding the sensor, there was also a special lens for this. Some people love to use that, but I'm not going to be using it because for me it doesn't make any sense doing it, because it works out of the box perfectly. The first thing we're seeing when plugging in the device itself, it will showcase how you need to assemble all of the sensors. Shooting will give you the option to set up the crosser settings. If you have any problems, you can just aim at the screen, go to the special menu in here, and just setting everything up. But if the thing has been configured correctly, you can navigate with the D-pad through the menu, fairly easy. But let's do a quick overview of all of the games that are on this version at this moment. But what can you actually play when it comes to different games? We have some limitations due of the power. There is no Techno Pirate to begin with, but we do have Laser Disc. And laser disc, oh man, this D-pad is really sensitive, by the way. The laser disc is one of the first things that we can find, or actually end of the list over here, but all kinds of old school games like Crime Patrol. One of those games we're going to be checking out because, oh boy, it's so bad that I like it. Nevertheless, we're having over here the NES. We're having the Super NES. You can just actually see a lot of classic ones and some games I've personally never played. We're having MAME over here. And the list is quite huge when it comes to all kinds of different games also different regions like i think it was was it not a zero point yeah zero point is a different game but we have operation wolf but there is no operation wolf 2 only one and three and then we're getting into the playstation list over here with point blank one two ninja salt with the sega dreamcast and that's actually it so the list is not like massive, like thousands of games, but we do have a lot of like hidden gems in here. Let's try a couple of them. But let's say we have problems with the way how it has been configured. So what we're going to be doing is holding the two buttons over here. Hold for a couple of seconds. The menu will pop up and in here we can actually get into the favorite game, turn on and off. We can go to the light gun, course settings, and this is what we're going to be needing because if you need to do reconfiguring, and we can even turn off the course here if you want to. So, and even have the option for the game screen scaling to a 6x9 to 4x3. But let's turn on the cross here. 
the cheating mode. All right, let's hold it again to get into the menu. All right, and let's go to the Crusher light gun settings. And in here, we're going to be configuring everything. See if this is going to be working like it should be. Yep, there we go. That's been configured perfectly. And let's go back to the game itself. Let's go to continue and let's go. Okay, so let's start off with one of the classic games, PlayStation 1 Time Crisis. I love this game, it's so much fun. So let's see how they configured everything. Does the, yep, like I said, this button is going to be the standing mode. But the feedback of this thing is absolutely amazing. All right, so let's get into the game. Pressing the side button, you can pause the game because it's actually a PlayStation game. Shouldn't bring you to the next page. Let's go. But also, with time prices in this game, it works absolutely perfect. A lot of fun to play. Okay, so that's kind of cool with some of the emulators. So basically with this game, you should move your gun out of the screen to reload. But you have the cheat button for actually using it front of here, so we can just actually reload. In this case, having unlimited bullets. And what you can actually see with this emulator, we don't have the crosshair enabled, so I don't always need to have the cheating mode enabled. Oh, there we go. But the emulation performance, and even on Dreamcast, is amazing on this. But the only difference is when you're looking at, let's say, some emulation on the PC. So, for example, if we're out of bullets with the PC, I think it was also the... I think it was a software called Hooker that communicates with the PC, knowing when you have no buttons. So, also, the rumble doesn't do anything and with this. We always have rumble. Well, let's move into some other games of the Dreamcast to check out how the over emulation is. Maze of the King is one of those let's say, classic games. I experienced the first time, I think, when I was reviewing Arcade Cabinet. Same situation that we can use the button for reloading. Okay, let's get into this classic game, Retail Enforcer. I can still remember that I actually played this on the Mega Drive. Never good to get to work. Okay, so it's kind of cool. So we have this machine gun. Oh, we don't have a machine gun. I was thinking maybe it's fun to go to rapid fire with some of the, the situations. That's one of the convenient things. If you're going to be holding the button in the game, you can just actually switch between the rapid fire if you want to and go all the way back. Okay, next up, let's try some MAME and Wisdom Terminator. And this is an, a great game where we're going to be needing Rapid Fire for. So let's enable it. All right, there we go. Start the game. It's Judgment Day. Yeah. Let's hold it. There's only one downside to this. If I'm looking at the Windows version with the hooker software, it will communicate way better. And I have to do when, when the gun power is lowering down, normally the solenoid needs to also be slowing down. But that top in future doesn't work. So this is just full solenoid all the way. But you can just hear, I'm holding the machine or the MX light gun against my body. You can hear that it sounds so much different. 
and that has to do of the rumble. Let's use the rockets. As I mentioned before, you can just do that without any problem. This works absolutely amazing. So we have a couple of those games that are completely like real, real gun shooting games. So let's connect the second one and let's go all Rambo mode with this. So what we need to do is getting the hub that has been laying in here and then going to be putting in the recall, putting in the controller and it's going to be automatically configuring to player two. If it doesn't work, we're going to be needing to configure everything. We'll reset it. Ah, there we go. It shows case that it has been enabled. And it seems to be that this thing seems to be working. I, yep, this thing seems to be working. So let's get into the game. Let's check out. Okay, this control has been configured. And let's go dual mode. There we go. Ah, this is not a rapid fire. Rapid fire, go. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. This is pure satisfaction, I can tell you that. So this is one epic way to play together. We're friends, two player, no problem. I did see that I didn't even configure the second controller. I would love it that they have both a different sound. <laughs> <laughs> but let's move on to the American laser disc games. We can disable the Corsair if you want to. I'm just going to not doing that because those games are quite difficult. <laughs> those cinematic cutscenes are so funny. Free sucker! <laughs> what? <laughs> I really messed it up. Come on. <laughs> Can we skip this? There we go. <laughs> See, this game is so brutal. Oh, there we go. I was almost too late. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I played this part so much and I still mess it up. <laughs> but if you're searching for a plug and play solution and just to elevate your overall XA arcade gaming experience, this MX is absolutely the answer for that. The solenoid is so much more better and aggressive. And not to forget the extra feedback at the back. This is absolutely a very cool, let's say, device. And with all of the games that are implemented on this box or the compatibility, we do have a lot of games that we can really enjoy. Think about Terminator or some other real shooting games. They are absolutely amazing for this. Confidential Mission was also a lot of fun to play with this. And of course, I already mentioned before, you can just very easily like, set this thing in rapid fire mode or just get into the single shot. This works perfectly. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments. Do you think it's really worth it? You can buy these, let's say, light guns and make things extra, or you can get yourself a complete kit. It will be great to see you in the next video. And let me know in the comments, what do you think?